Welcome to episode 11 of Hashbang TV. Hashbang.tv. Hashbang.tv. Uh, coming to you from Tech Hub. Yeah, new location. So, yeah, it's kind of the same glass, but different backdrop. So why are we in Tech Hub today? So we've got Elizabeth Varley on the show. The CEO of Tech Hub. Yeah. So, interesting uh, interview. Yeah, really, really good. We've been on a small summer break. We haven't put an episode out for a, little, a few weeks. No, we've had a well-deserved break. What have you been up to? <laughs> oh, nothing much. And you? <laughs> Oh, I've just been, you know, out and about. You've got a new job. I've got a new job. And you've launched a new company. I have. Bardow is live. Bardow. She flies, she flies. At long last, three years in the making. Uh, feels weird. Yeah? Yeah. Good. Feels like the day after your wedding, you know? You've been preparing for something so long, and then it's done, and it's out in the open. You go, wow. Yeah, I think there'll be lots of embarrassing photos. <laughs> there are already plenty of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Tell us about your new job then. Yeah, so I'm um, working for Twilio which kind of most people know, I guess, that follow me or the show. Yeah. So I've just been out to San Francisco. You've been away to Canada. I did. I went to a wedding in uh, Vancouver, which is yeah. very nice. So, yeah, we've had a summer break and we're back with a vengeance. We are. We are. Ready to amaze you with another cracking lineup of guests. Indeed, indeed. So uh, you've been uh, busy developing because you're a bit of a developer. Yeah, I'm now a coder. Yeah. Which is hilarious, <laughs> if anyone knows me. Yeah, so uh, part of the kind of initiation that you have to go through when you join Twilio is write an app using Twilio, obviously. Yeah. So I've written something for the show. So we now have the bang line. The bang line. The bang line. Okay. So if Chris does his job, we'll have a little kind of uh, number on screen, hopefully. Chris from Alpha Punk. Chris from Alpha Punk. The Alpha Punk the on awesome, Twitter. The awesome design and editing kind of agency. So what is the number then? The number, which I need to read because I haven't memorised it, is a London number. So it's 02, just as I'm supposed to say the number my laptop goes off, 02033222264. Cool. And the, and the 2264 is bang. So yeah, none of that makes sense, but just read it on the screen. Yeah, or if you're on the podcast. If you're on the podcast, then you'll have to read the show notes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they're going to get you on Red Nose Day. I've got a feeling. I don't think you're going to get many jobs on a, on a, a telephone. I've got a feeling there's going to be no calls <laughs> to the bank. <laughs> Certainly not this week, anyway. 020 B A N G. B-A-N-G. <laughs> Seamless. <laughs> Seamless. Yeah. So the bank line is going to be a real success. <laughs> I can't even tell the number. No. Yeah. yeah, voice is the future. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, so, so we've got Elizabeth to look forward yep. to. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, yeah, um, and new people to look at, w wandering around in the background. <laughs> so we're joined today by Elizabeth Varley, CEO of Tech Hub here in London. Thank you for coming along, Elizabeth. Thank you for having me. So what we're keen to kind of understand is the story about you and kind of how you've come to be, uh, you know, one of the most kind of high-profile people in the London tech community. <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> So, um, give us a little bit about your kind of background. You know, how do you, um, how did you kind of end up in London to begin with? Well, I'm I'm originally from Melbourne, Australia. Uh, I've been in London for nearly thirteen years, so I'm starting to acclimatise. <laughs> um, so I I originally studied journalism and then started working with uh, an internet company. Uh -huh. uh, it was a human powered search engine, if you remember those things back in the day. We don't really have them anymore. Um, I think they're called blogs now, effectively. Right. You know, where you find out interesting things to do or see or go to or that kind of thing. Um, so don't include that, but it makes me sound like an idiot. Um, <laughs> uh, and for me, that the informality of working in the kind of environment where almost everybody's kind of on the same level and you're all contributing to this fairly new thing and, and your own personal responsibility makes responsibilities and tasks make a real difference to the company mm. and to the product. Um, that was really that was really cool for me. I was suddenly like, yeah, I'm I'm much more interested in copywriting than I am in being a journalist. And so that really sort of got me started. Um, and then I, I came to the UK, worked with the BBC for a while in a, in a more of a support capacity, mm. uh, and then started working for digital agencies as a, as a copywriter. And that was really where I thought, right, yeah, digital is, is absolutely where I want to be. Stuff on the web, absolutely. Mobile, great. So where did the kind of idea for Tech Hub come from? For me, actually, it was 
I've always been interested in the concept of working more flexibly, mm -hmm. uh, managing your own hours, you know, sort of working in a way that works for you. Uh, and I think part of it was from, you know, working in a smaller company where as long as you've got everything done, it doesn't matter so much if you decide to come in early and leave early or yeah. more usually come in early and leave late. Um, but I was working from home in the UK as a as a, a freelance and consultant copywriter, I then started to run an editorial agency. So I ran that for six years. That was my uh, first business. And I worked from home for that entire period, mm. uh, pretty much. And so I remember thinking to myself, wouldn't it be great if there was a place where I could go and work and work around other people who were doing similar things and not feel so isolated. And I went to a lot of events and that sort of thing. So I had, you know, contact and I wasn't a complete hermit. Oh. But um, this is back in 2001, I started looking at this idea that like, could I, could I create something that was sort of a, a, a shared workspace environment? And so I started looking into this um, and then my, my editorial agency business sort of just took over and it wasn't something I could pursue at the time. And, um, and then flexible working spaces like the hub started to, to pop up. Um, and in, in exactly the locations I was thinking about, with exactly the sort of concept I was thinking about, and I thought, ah, oh, okay, lots of people are thinking about this sort of thing. Lots of people I know, freelance, lots of people I know start their own businesses, don't want to have an, you know, a big office, but need somewhere to work and be part of a community. Yeah. And so this sort of this thread of an idea has sort of been with me for a long time. So I started working on a, a plan for a much bigger concept around that time in uh, about 2008. Had lunch with uh, my friend Mike Butcher, uh, editor of TechCrunch Europe, who you guys know. Mm -hmm. um, and he, I was talking to him about this and I said, you know, I, I really think something like this could work. And he said, well, interestingly enough, I've been thinking about the same kinds of things. I've been writing a lot about this idea that there's no focal point for the tech industry mm -hmm. uh, in London, in the UK. And I really think I want to get involved in, in changing that. And so I think, you know, our two ideas here can come together and, and make something. And that was, uh, that was the beginning of TechUp. So, so going back to you sat down had a conversation with Mike. You both said we want to do this thing. Yeah. We can change it. We both have the right networks to do. Yeah. What things did you have to put in place to to actually make it happen? Then what was the kind of you know uh, startup process like yeah. for you? Did you have to raise cash? Did you have to you know get a business plan together? And how, how did it go? How did so it go? Um, lots of people say to me uh, will ask me how's TechHub funded. And I say, oh, Tech House funded by revenue. And they say, oh, I'm sorry, I thought you said revenue. <laughs> um, and I have to say that starting a business like this without a big pot of capital is hard. It would have been much easier had we been able to just buy things and sign things and all that sort of things. Like, yeah, we've got this big load of money just to, to do this that'll see us through the first 12 months. Yeah, no problem. But we did it the hard way. We bootstrapped like pretty much everyone in here is. And so I think that also gives us a, a better understanding of, of what everybody goes through. And so that helps us keep their needs at the heart of what we're trying to do. Um, so we, the first thing that, that we did was ask other people, uh, was say, okay, we think this is a good idea. Do you think this mm. is a good idea? And so at first that was just sort of individuals chatting, you know, uh, talking to some people who were um, international, would you need something when you're based in London, talking to people who are based here, would you need something, you know, where you could access each other well. Um, and it was really positive. And so um, I then uh, got up for a couple of minutes uh, at a TechCrunch event okay. and said, uh, just before the party, and said, okay, you know, most of you have heard about this thing that, that Mike's been writing about, because he'd been writing about this for a while and then started saying, well, something seems to be happening. I'm getting involved in it. Um, what does everybody think about it? Uh, we did a little survey on there, like, do people actually need this, this kind of thing? Where's the location that you would want something mm. like this? And pretty much everything that we had assumed was the case uh, turned out to be the case. And this area, you know, shortage, because there was such a cluster here already, it was like, yeah, there's mm. no way we're going to set up something somewhere and say, hey, everybody, <laughs> yeah, come over here. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
And so, uh, so at this event, I got up, I did like 60 seconds saying, you've seen that Mike's been writing about this, um, it's actually happening, you know, this is a bit about the plan. If you're interested in getting involved in some way or finding out more, come and chat to me, I'm going to be here all evening. I got off stage and was absolutely and utterly mobbed, like three people deep. So, um, so then we, we, found a, we found a property, uh, then uh, we got gazumped by, uh, by someone else. Boom. Um, yeah, which was a shame. Um, and then we, uh, we, we found the, uh, the place on City Road. When I saw that property, I was like, yep, this is the one. It's the location is right, the massive window at the front, the fact that it was all on one floor. Yeah. And just that sort of big L shape, yeah. big spaces was exactly what we needed. So we were like, yep, this is the one. Um, and then so before, before we signed a lease, before we had photos of the place, before anything, we released uh, a limited number of founder memberships. Mm -hmm. um, and that was completely oversubscribed. So we were like, okay, people genuinely get this concept and they really want it. And we'd done a, we'd done a little uh, competition where we'd said, um, I think it was actually before that, after that, I can't remember, uh, where we said, okay, do tell us in 60 seconds or less on video um, why you want Tech Hub and when um, years membership yeah. when we open. And we were sort of, we'd spoken to like a couple of people saying, can you make sure you do a video <laughs> so that we don't look really stupid if no one enters this thing. And I think we got about 45 videos in, wow. in a couple of days. It was like, wow, okay. And people were so creative. They, that one guy like moved his entire home office out into the snow because this was like February. <laughs> Um, or January, and um, and filmed it from out there and said, you know, I'm working, blah blah blah. And I want tech up because you know it's getting really cold. And, um, did he win? Uh, no, I don't oh. think he did. But we, in the end, we, we picked six winners because right. we just right. couldn't. Right. Right. Um, we just couldn't couldn't pick them because people were so creative. Um, they they were all online, but I think they all got taken off the old side. But they're going to go uh, back up again. And you have to see these things. So it was just like we were suddenly like, okay. People get this. Yeah. We have to make this right. happen. So it's two years on. What point did you kind of suddenly say, do you know what? This is working. This is, you know. Yeah. It, I, where are the kind of milestones? Where did you, you know, what, what were the things that kind of across the, those two years? Where did you, have you ever had an opportunity to sit back and go, we've done it? This is, we're actually <laughs> achieving something. Or do you, are you I'm, still like 100 miles I'm, an hour? I'm an entrepreneur, so all I can see are the things that we haven't done, yeah. all the things that we need to do, all the things that didn't work, uh, all that sort of thing. And people are like, oh, but you've achieved all this. And it's like, yep, 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 whatever. What's the next thing? Yeah. I mean, we have an amazing team here and they, you know, they just go on doing their things and that's what, and, and it's great because it allows me to be able to do the other things that I need to do. I mean, I'm not just talking about holiday because I still don't really take holidays um, but to do the travel that I need to do to to work on the, the strategy of the company and, and all that sort of thing the day-to-day -day, the keeping everything running you know I am um, I haven't unblocked a toilet for a while good <laughs> that I think in terms that's of progress. milestones that's progress. Yeah, that's a good point actually yeah, yeah that, that's the milestone the, to oh, the, to the, the toilet is city road that was the yeah so we know what to call this episode now. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's, that's you that. know you've made it when you don't need to unblock toilets that's, anymore. So how do people get involved? If they're watching this, they're not members or they want to find more information, what should they do? Um, you know, there, there are loads of different ways that you can get involved cool. from coming to a single event to, you know, to becoming a member and being able to just drop in whenever you want, yeah. to being a resident if you need somewhere to be based all the time. We're also um, about to release some more um, team spaces. So for those companies that either grow up, you know, they're already here and they're sort of six or seven people and they need their own spaces. That's going to be ready, I think, at the end of July. Um, or for companies that are sort of at that size already and they're like, we need our own team space, but we want to be part of this community. Mm. That's, you know, that's going to be ready to go um, from the end of July. So, you know, cool. get in there. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Brilliant. Thanks very much. Cool. Yeah, very interesting. Cheers, Thank you. Good to have a chat. Okay, so another amazing interview. Um, so what's coming up in the future, future shows? Uh, so we've got an interview coming up with CEO of a startup called Bardow, which is an audiobook app. So that's coming in a few weeks, so that should be good. Bardow. Bardow, B-A-R-D-O-W-L. I've heard that's the Spotify for audiobooks. I think so, yeah. Is so the right? CEO of that is coming on. It'll be yeah. cool. Yeah. I've heard he's really handsome. Mm. 
Okay. And, <laughs> and after that, I think, you know, we, we've got a few people lined up, but if you've got any suggestions of who you want to see on the show, or if you want to be on the, the show yourself, yes, indeed. call the bang line. <laughs> if you can remember the number, which <laughs> might or may not be on the screen, and if you're listening to the podcast, yeah, whatever. Yeah, it might be easier just to tweet us or something rather than yeah. ring that bang line thing, but... Is, you're saying it's not a good idea. Well, you know, let's see what people do. But yeah, we want we want to have interesting people with interesting backstories launching, you know, tech startups in the UK. So interesting people and the CEO of Bardo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also coming up, so I've organised an event in Brighton called Open Mic. Okay, uh, yeah. more plugs for you. Yeah, more plugs. <laughs> it's all about me, as you know. <laughs> Pretty That's because I actually do other stuff. Nice. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what's the open mic? So it's a uh, mobile innovation camp. So mobile developers, mobile startups, anybody interested in mobile tech, mobile web, uh, and yeah. So a day out in Brighton, what's Thursday, fifth of July. Thursday, fifth of July, mm. on the beach, uh, nice. Brighton Ballroom. So yeah, full day event. It's all free. Free lunch. Okay. Uh, sponsored by uh, some really interesting people, so we yep. can do it for free. Um, so yeah, that's coming up. So where do people go to find out more about that? Open-mic.org.uk or Open Mic Camp on Twitter. Awesome. So, till next time. Then. Yeah, another one in the bag. Yeah. We're back.